A spectacular day's racing lay ahead for the Finstown Castle Hotel, Gaswise.ie, Formula Boss Ireland cars on their final day of the 2022 season on October 2nd. But first they had to survive the warm-up laps. As Eamon Matheson joined the track, we just heard his engine boost and he ended up spinning at the end of the straight, unfortunately damaging a wheel and some suspension which would put him out of action on the final day of the series. These were the overall championship points before these final two rounds. Drivers dropped their worst two scores of the year, so some may not improve by the full total of points they score today. Here is the Boss 1 category table for over 2 litre cars, where Tom Gochran has a 38 point lead over Jonathan Files. Unfortunately a problem arose with Jonathan Files' car during the delayed start and he was towed back to the pits. Here are the positions in the Boss 2 category for under 2 litre cars, which Aaron Gochran and Tony Greenan also lead. A further pair of warm up laps were held once the track was cleared and this is how the drivers lined up for the first race. Unfortunately, Jonathan Files wouldn't get sorted for the restart and Gary Graham, who hadn't qualified, would have to start from the pit lane as soon as he could get a gear selector problem sorted. The race would be shortened to 12 minutes. Tony Greenan's a little slow to get away on the front row. Sylvie Mullins goes well and Michael Roach on the near side makes a great start. Michael has launched himself into the lead as they enter turn one. And he's secured it, Sylvie Mullen second, Tony Green in third. Aaron Gochran expected to be cautious in this race as a good finish will secure his championship. And Mark Reed there really challenging Tom Gochran, while Noel Robinson hasn't mastered the starts in his new car. Oh, Michael really locking up there coming in from the country. Tom Gochran has powered himself back into fifth place, Mark Reed sixth. Noel Robinson looking for a way past the little Lee Stone as they file through the S's. Onto the main straight and it looks like the F3 of Michael Roach has the legs of Mullins' Gould. At the back of the pack, Noel Robinson is making a move on Mark Reed. He moves up to sixth. Out of turn one, Michael Roach's car looks twitchy, but it's quick. Aaron Gochran is posturing behind Tony Greenan. Interesting to see Noel Robinson approaching Tom Gochran's World Series as Noel drove a World Series in Kirkistown earlier this year. Michael Roach seems to have found some advantage and he's making the most of it. Noel working his lines behind Tom. The Lee Stone with just a thousand cc is definitely the minnow in the race, but they can be handled very determinedly. The end of lap two and Roach has built a bit of an advantage. Sylvie also has to watch his mirrors against Tony Greenan. In the distance we can see Noel Robinson has passed Tom Gochran, but Tom may be able to take it back on the straight. He was on the outside though and Noel Robinson must have outbraked him. He'll have more of a lap to build a margin against his powerful opposition. Reed sniffs an opportunity. Roach continuing to build a lead. And we see how Mullins is now strongly under attack from Tony Greenan. Aaron Gochran has a front row seat to watch this battle. Second, third and fourth bunched up at the start of the straight. But Sylvie does make his gap. Noel Robinson has a lot of ground to make up now from the other F3s. And look how close Mark Reed is able to get to Tom Gochran at the start of the straight. Michael Roach, much smoother out of turn one at the start of lap four, must be getting the measure of his newly fitted wings. Tony Green and aggressively chopping the curbs. Noel Robinson has started a solitary journey to bridge the gap between these two packs. No such space for Sylvie, Tony and Aaron. Visually, Robinson looks to be making progress. And Mark must be able to hear every movement Tom makes on the throttle. Guy Graham joins the track from the pit lane, just as Michael Roach is about to start lap five. Gary's been having trouble with the compressor on the gear selector in his car. Michael passes him without delay. At least he's getting a chance to benchmark himself against the fastest cars on the track. Behind fifth place, Noel Robinson. Mark Reed is ahead of Tom Gochran. But Tom is making a manoeuvre on the straight and he outdrags the little Lee Stone. Reed is keeping Gochran Sr. on his toes. Tom is out to secure a win in the Boss 1 category for over 2,000cc cars. 
and Sun Iron is on course to do the same in the Boss 2 category for under 2000cc cars. The tail end getting loose on the Lee Stone there. He loses a bit of ground, but full marks for effort. Behind Michael Roach and Sylvie, Tony Green's gone a little wide and Aaron Gochran has got to look up the inside. They're side by side down the straight, but Tony's able to power ahead. Tony's got to look forward and back at the moment. Aaron is putting a bit of pressure on. The Lee Stone won the line there, but doesn't have the power for the straight. Roach has built a great lead by this lap six. Tony has decided the best way to deal with Aaron is to get ahead of Sylvie. We can observe the distance that Noel Robinson has to fourth place. And Gary Graham's car going well after the late start. Reed still flinging the Lee Stone at the back of the World Series. Aaron gets a good run out of the final corner of lap six. A win on the final day of the year would be a lovely finish to the season for Michael Roach. The last day of Sylvie's reign as boss champion. While proving his own competitiveness, he's also vindicating the class of 22. Gary Graham, a number of laps down, but just behind Noel Robinson on track, is verifying a lot of progress with his car this season. Tom Gochran's car has been temperamental, especially at the start of the season, but it has been a good finisher since round five. We haven't seen Sylvie since rounds one and two. He won the first of those. Second, third and fourth all setting 52 second laps at the moment. As is Noel Robinson. Michael Roach set a string of 51s at the beginning of the race to build this advantage. And these three have all done a 51 on lap 7. Is this the start of a push from Mullins to catch Roach? The fish tailing gives a bit of a clue. The other two will follow. Tom Gochran can't quite shake Mark Reed. He's doing enough to keep him at bay. Michael Roach actually won the penultimate round of last year's championship. These three would like to stop history repeating itself. Robinson hasn't cracked the 51s in the race yet. I think they're coming for you, Michael. Aaron has a good toe behind Tony Green in there. Gary Graham is setting a string of 55s in the Formula Renault. Michael Roach still with a good lead on lap 9. Aaron Gochran doing the right thing for the championship. A low 52 for Noel. He's just about on the pace of the others. But not making any ground. Tom Gochran and Mark Reed are mostly lapping in the 54s, although that was a slightly slower one for Tom. Potentially, Sylvie's tyres could endure differently to Tony and Aaron's towards the end of the race. Could that be a factor? The colour scheme may have changed, but that car always had a characteristic puff of smoke as it went down the gears, even when Tony or Aaron were driving it. Second to fourth are edging ever closer to Michael each lap. That's a very clean line from Michael. Also from Sylvie. These two are still influencing each other. Be interesting to see how long Gary Graham can stay ahead of Tom Gochran on track. Michael Roach leads. Sylvie Mullins, Tony Green and Aaron Gochran. Nice to see such competitive sport at the end of the season. Fifth place, no Robinson is still really pushing. Michael Roach is responding to the others' increasing pace. That's his first 51 since lap four. It was a 51-7. But these three are on 51-2s. Gary Graham hasn't lost much ground to the World Series and Lee Stone in that lap. Noel Robinson just clocked his first 51 in this race. Well, the gap from Michael to Sylvie is now less than the gap between Tony and Aaron. With a better start for Noel Robinson, we could have had a five-way battle. Tony 
Tony Greenan is able to get very close to Sylvie at the beginning of the straight. But that's when the Gould earns its keep. Michael Roach doesn't look like he's able to work the full width of the track anymore. Perhaps his tyres are losing their edge. Mark Reed still keeping with Tom Gochran as they approach Gary Graham. But Gary, a number of laps down, doesn't need to pull over yet. All back in the low 52s on lap 11. Mid lap 12. And it really looks like Aaron Gochran is hanging back at the moment. The Lee Stone is very close to the World Series now. The top four are very evenly spaced as they complete lap 12. Michael's going to have to start defending his position now. Oh, <laughs> Sylvie's getting loose. Tony's ready to capitalise on any mistakes. And Aaron's keeping out of trouble. Well, Robinson's back in the 51s again. This is his first fully dry race day in this chassis. Those are three very different cars circulating at quite a similar pace at the moment. Now that Sylvie has caught Michael, he has to watch his mirrors with Tony right behind him also. Unlucky oh, lap 13 for Tom Gochran. The World Series has slowed, but the Lee Stone moves up to sixth. But look, Tony Greenan is up the inside of Sylvie Mullins. He's second. But wow, look at the ghoul slingshot between the two F3s, grabbing the position back. Out of turn one, and we see that Aaron Gochran was able to follow through past Tony as well. A low 52 for Noel Robinson on the end of 13. This is the final lap, and Sylvie Mullins is challenging Michael right at the bitter end. And Tony's looking to take back third, which he held for so long in this race. Gary Graham's definitely got his gears in order. Tom Cochran will have been disappointed to lose that battle against the Lee Stone. There's definitely something wrong with the World Series, but it looks like it'll go the distance again, and he'll get his championship. Michael Roach takes the win from Sylvie Mullins, and Aaron Cochran secures the Boss Championship with a podium finish. Just from Tony Greenan, who's been challenging him very hard in the latter part of the season. Noel Robinson, fifth. Michael Roach is still a winner in 2022. Aaron Gochran begins to celebrate his championship victory. He'll be looking forward to a pressure-free race too. Gary Graham is just holding that track position ahead of Mark Reed in eighth. Reed is sixth, a worthwhile outing for him. I think they all enjoyed that. That's boss one for Tom Gochran with 7th in this race. Aaron will take boss 2 as well as the overall. So the Gochrans will actually head all three points tables. In the pits, we catch up with the drivers. What a result for Michael Roach. He appeared to have fitted new wings and flown away. I would have been say fly away now, but yeah, we just we tried a few bigger wings there, just see if it improved the handling. Let's just try something different. Uh, see to work, something worked anyway. Good start had been the foundation of his success. Got a good start, yeah. Got a good launch off the line. And tucked in ahead of Sylvie there. And I was hoping Sylvie would hold her eyes up there. And just give me head down, opened up a bit of a gap there. And the tyres started going off then after a few laps, but I lucky enough I had enough of a gap built. It was only a 12 minute race, a few little delays, so lucky enough, yeah. Had the wings really made that much of a difference? Yeah, it has definitely, there's an improvement there, but on different tyres and stuff as well there. I was, I've been kind of on them times, there, but I just haven't done it in the race there. So, I don't know, going good there today now. <laughs> Keep trying. And uh, I'll be in the same grid position for the afternoon? Fourth again, yes, yeah, so. Hopefully get a good launch game and see what'll happen. <laughs> Try. Sylvie's crew were doing a bit of work on his brakes when we caught up with him between the races. 
Yeah, so we're just needing the brakes. Exactly. We I just felt them a little bit spongy. But yeah, they're fine. There's no issues. Uh, we put on some new tires on that race. Uh, we'll go back to the old ones again. I, pr I prefer them. Uh, but it's kind of hard to get grip coming out of the corners. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see how the next race goes. Yeah, this car's running good. Um, While Michael was out in front, Sylvie came under quite a bit of pressure from Tony Greenan. Yeah, sure, Tony was all over the back of me. Our times were relatively slow from what we did in qualifying. So I look at the two lads were behind me, and sure you're defending then, and you're not concentrating on your own race. So. He'd won the first race of the year under the safety car, but we missed him the rest of the season. Yeah, I've only done one race at the start of the year. I hadn't done anything all year. We're just busy with work and we haven't time. And we did a lot last year and look at they said we, we uh, give it a give it a little bit of a break. We'll come out the last race. Look at it, I mean yesterday was miserable, but today is beautiful day. So give give it a go again and see how we go. And next year? Uh, look, we'll do something. Um, don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, we were, as everyone knows, the cars for sale. I was, you know, maybe go back to an F3. Can be too old now for this, this power, you know. Uh, so yeah, look, we'll uh, we'll see how things go. Uh, the F3, my own F3, we've only engine back for it. Uh, we've put that back into the, hopefully get it up and running over the winter. So yeah. Aaron Gochran was being patient to score points for the championship, but was entertained by the battle between Greenan and Mullins. Good race to be fair, it was probably my most enjoyable race of the year. I had front row seat to watch Tony and Sylvie absolutely throwing down at each other. So I was loving it. I gotta say, Tony's super brave. He was going for the tiniest gap and Sylvie's driving was brilliant, he was so defensive. Um, it was a great race to be fair. I did sit and think, oh, we probably had a bit more pace in the F3s, you just couldn't get past. Um, but no, it was great. I was happy to sit in fourth. I was sitting there thinking about the championship and saying, if I just stay here, I'll be okay. Then startlingly, Tony slowed at the beginning of the final lap, just after passing Mullins into second, and let Aaron through too. It was like, I don't even know where it happened. I think it was turn one. Tony just slowed down drastically, so I, I didn't really know. I just went around the outside of him, and from what I gather, chatting to him, I think he made a mistake. I think he thought the race was over. But um, it was a high-pressure race with the four of us so close. I think Mick had a great start on softs, they were probably starting to go off on him at the end so he was coming back to us and we were probably all sitting looking going it's anyone's, it's anyone's so it was good, it was, I enjoyed it, I thought it was a good race, hopefully it was a good race for everyone to watch. It certainly was. Third place was enough to make the championship a certainty. Yeah, to be fair, we didn't need a massive finish this weekend, so I was under good instruction to stay out of trouble, just go out there and drive around, really. So um, that was the plan. It's like I say, I was sitting behind Tony and was happy to take fourth, but um, I thought he'd had a mechanical issue, so uh, to be fair, I went round his outside, took toward and uh, in toward, I knew that's it done, so just finish it. So over the moon to get the championship done. Big thanks to everybody, all the boys in Stone, Joe Power, Lee, me, me, everybody that's worked on the car this year. It's been immense. The cars, you know, it's been that we haven't had any problems since testing. And uh, that's just credit to the hard work from the boys in the team. So it's nice to get the championship won where we can all sit back for at least one race this season and relax a bit. So um, that's the plan for race two. Go out and enjoy it. I think I was saying the car is going to be up for sale tomorrow, so this could end up being the last time I drive it, so the plan is to just go out and have fun with it. This could have been a dream manoeuvre by Tony Greenan, but at last it was a lap too early. I think I'm a bit of a clown to be honest. <laughs> uh, Mick Roach got a great start, he passed me, uh, I think I was in third place then, behind Sylvie. Um, I had a trying to push on with Sylvie. Uh, Sylvie is a very hard man to get past, but eventually got past him. Um, second last lap, which I thought was the, the last lap, past him coming out of this top corner here, and uh, past the lane, and I thought the race was over, and I just backed off the throttle, and uh, Oren Garkin passed me, and Sylvie both, both passed me. So uh, then I just realised, what have you done? Like? So at that stage it was too late. I uh, ended up finishing fourth. Um, you know, it's the funny thing, isn't it, about racing? There's, there's so much you've got to manage. To yeah. Play. It's not just just sitting in the car and driving. That's you're it. Yeah. Clocks, you're watching, I you're watching I had in my head that I had to get past Sylvie in that lap. Uh, that lap. And if I do that there, I was going to take second place. You know. Sure. That's that's the way it is. Yeah.
you know. At least, at least you know yourself what you can do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the cures, cures are brilliant, so it is. The cures, uh, we're done it actually down in the 49 second there. Yesterday in qualifying, and um, I think it was a 51.1 there qualifying today. Um, to put it on the front row, but the pace is there with the car, so hopefully we can get out a good start here in, this, in the second race and hopefully get a win. <laughs> and look, at least that, that's happened at the end of this season. Arn has a tied up. Arn has a tied so up, yeah. At least so if you know, lose next yeah, year, the championship. That, that's it, yeah. We've got a great car uh, for next year, so. He's obviously disappointed, but starts next year with a clean sheet. Noel Robinson had hit trouble as early as the qualifying session. We uh, we incident in qualifying where we we lost a wheel, but uh, we didn't do any damage. We're back out. We lost half a session, but um, this was decent enough. Uh, first time out in the dry in this car, so we were a bit to learn. But uh, then I struggled off the line, went the last. But pace again, race pace was good. So if we get myself off the line and stick with the boys at the front, maybe I could get make a race of it with them. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Apart from the start, he had kept pace with the leaders. The pace, the pace overall was really good after the first few laps, but just give myself too much to do. So, uh, yeah, I just need to get my, get my finger out in this one. Oh, but it's Chris to the middle for next year, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. And uh, championship's gone now, but we'll see. We'll get through this one and uh, then we'll do a bit of work the car over the winter and, and come back uh, stronger next year. Yeah, build a good foundation for it. Yep, absolutely. Great stuff. Looking forward to the, the last one? Yeah, yeah. The last race, so nobody's really anything to race for now, so I'll... All or nothing for everybody. Mick got a fantastic win on the first one. It's good seeing back up at the front. And uh, yeah, we'll see. There's four cars there. Hopefully, they can make a five and, and uh, make it a great race. Mark Reed had a great dice with the World Series of Tom Gochran until the big car slowed and he passed. It was a great battle. Just uh, struggled a bit in the straight line. But uh, no, it was a great race. I don't know what happened in the end. I think he broke down or the car let him down. But um, no, a great race. And hopefully, we can have a, another great race later on. Yeah, you, you, you just came out for this one now at the, the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, just the end of the year, yeah. Because I, I think um, we have to see Elise Stone out for the, um, the when they do the Leinster Trophy race, That's but right, it was away yeah. from here this time. So. Yeah, 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 and we were, there was three cars in the Monoposter Championship in England, so the cars were tied up for the year, but we said we'd come out for the last one anyway. So It's, it's good fun to see the, the David and Goliath battle there anyway. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a difference in size, sorry, right, and power, but yeah. now we'll, we'll give it our best shot. Great stuff, and we're looking forward to the afternoon. Cheers, thank you. I asked Tom what was the issue that came up. Yeah, uh, stuck in fourth gear. I uh, couldn't get any other gear, but I, I knew I only had to bring it home, so I uh, couldn't really moan, like you know. So it's been a good year for the car. It started bad beginning of the year, first four rounds, but once we got through that, we're getting there. So yeah, no, it's good. You got the big boss category, did you? Yeah, boss one. So go over the moon to get that for the year. Uh, it's great to get the little fella getting full boss island. So it's nice to have the old son and. Me with two trophies, yeah, it's good. Good. It's a good celebration then at the end of the year? Yeah, we'll, we'll have a few drinks tonight, one or two. He's got work tomorrow, he's been told. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, family racing, brilliant. Yeah, it's got to be done, yeah. The Gochrans have a lot to celebrate from 2022. Great year, and I'm in fairness, it's great to bring the two cars back. Aaron winning full boss, Formula Boss on, and this bringing Boss one. So, uh, big thanks to Stone Motorsport for all the support and keeping the, us and the cars on the road. Big thanks to Joe and the laptop. He's kept us in check and uh, we couldn't have done it without him. So, fair play. And thanks to ICCR and Mondello for run every event very professionally. So, brilliant lads. Well done. Gary Graham had trouble with his pneumatic gear selector again and missed the qualifying and a few laps of the race. To be honest with you, it's partly my own fault. Um, I had the engine out of the car since the last race meeting and um, I pinched the pipe, uh, put it back in for the compressor that I shouldn't have um, I put my hand up, like, but, but, but uh, yeah, no, we got it started out there and um, we got great in the race flying, like, sort of, like, I felt more time in the car today. Which you I, got a great lap in today, didn't you? I, I, yeah, about the three, yeah, yeah, I did a great lap in, yeah, yeah, so, 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 so the car's gone great now, absolutely delighted with it, like, sort of, it's kind of give me a sport to keep it, not sell it now, just say. <laughs> the car declared a keeper. He has a few jobs lined up for the winter. I like to redo the whole plumbing system for actually the for the for the paddle shift over the winter, and uh, that'll solve that problem once for us. So again, it's all just heating problems, like sloths. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Now. It's going well. And you've a good fan club with you there today. Oh yeah, the whole family down today. Yeah, sort of. It's, it's very uh, it's very rare for them all to be down here. To, so I uh, decided to come down for for actually the last meeting, so just to cheer me on and see how it goes. 
a similar problem getting the second race going as the first. This time it was race one winner Michael Roach who spun on the outlap. Luckily Roach's car was unharmed, just beached on the edge of the track onto which he could be towed and he would be able to start from the back of the grid. Presenting Jonathan Files, who'd missed the first race, a bit of an opportunity. A good start for Tony Greenan and Sylvie Mullins gets going well and he's out in front. Tom Gochran's had a good drag race against Jonathan Files. Michael Roach will have a lot of work to do if he's to repeat his earlier success. Aaron Gochran coming up the inside of Tony Green and into second place. Jonathan Files in fourth and Michael Roach is already up to fifth. Gary Graham in the yellow Formula Renault starting with us this time. Back in from the country and Jonathan Files has moved up to third place. He's right in behind Aaron Gochran. Tony Green has Michael Roach on his inside. And Michael is through up to fourth. Mark Reed up to seventh in the lead stone ahead of Tom Gochran. Back onto the main straight completing the first lap. Sylvie Mullins leads Aaron Gochran in second place but... Jonathan Files is right behind him and he swings out and makes his manoeuvre up to second place. Mark Reed's just gone round the outside of Noel Robinson up to sixth. This is Files' chance to show us what the Lola can do against the Gould. He's got a bit of ground to make after coming through the pack from sixth on the grid. Aaron Gochran in third place. Enough points for the championship already, he can enjoy this race. Noel Robinson, a race winner on our last day out, doesn't look like he's quite running at his full potential today. At the head of the field, Files is chasing Mullins. Michael Roach is chasing Aaron Gochran. And Tony Greenan taking the measure of them all from 5th place. Noel Robinson has dropped out of 7th place, promoting Tom Gochran with Gary Graham chasing him close. That's a lot of firepower being released down the straight to start lap 3. The Gould and Lola at similar pace. And is that the start of a manoeuvre from Michael Roach? Look, in the distance, that's Gary Graham going up the inside of Tom Gochran. But Tom has the power to blast past. A great challenge from Gary though. Files closes on Sylvie under braking. He looks for an inside line. Looking at the other side through Campion Corner. Roach looking for the slightest slip from Aaron Gochran. Mark Reed has made a nice bit of space for himself in the Lee Stone in 6th place. And Gary Graham took back 7th place at the end of the straight from Tom Gochran. Noel Robinson looks like he's closing on the pair of them again. As they return from the country, Jonathan Files is our new race leader ahead of Sylvie Mullins. Michael Roach loses a bit of ground to Aaron Gochran there and Tony Greenan closes on him. Looking back behind Mark Reed, Gary Graham in 7th place and Noel Robinson having a go around the outside of Tom Gochran. But Tom has the line. Back onto the main straight to complete lap 3. Mullins is tight in behind Files but he slingshots around him. Files goes to outbreak him. There's quite a puff of smoke from the tyres. Files run a bit wide and Sylvie comes back up the inside. We have a head-to-head -head battle for the lead of the final boss race of 2022. Behind the pit building we can just see that No Robinson has passed Tom Gochran up to 8th. Has he got enough ground to keep ahead of the powerful World Series? It looks like it. Action at both ends of the field. That's the appeal of this series. Jonathan Files looks like he's composing himself before another attack. Aaron Gochran closes on the pair. As they approach the final corner of lap 4, we see that Sylvie Mullins has made a bit of space for himself. And in fact, Jonathan Files has dropped back a bit into Aaron Gochran's clutches. Tony Greenan is right behind Michael Roach now. Mark Reed in 6th place, a less hectic race than the last one. Noel Robinson up to 7th now, ahead of Gary Graham. It looks like there's an issue there with Tom Gochran's World Series again. Sylvie Mullins maintaining that gap to Jonathan Files after that earlier attack. Aaron Gochran keeping a close eye on the Lola. And Tony Greenan keeping the pressure on Michael Roach. Back at the line, it looks like Noel Robinson is beginning to reel in Mark Reed. They look even closer again through the corners. Meanwhile, our top three have stretched out a little bit. The same can't be said for fourth and fifth. Into the S's. Definitely more progress from Robinson. As they complete lap 5, it's Sylvie increasing his pace in the 51s. That's stretching them out. Jonathan also a 51 and a 52 from Aaron Gochran on this lap. 51s from him on lap 3 and 4. 
Perhaps it's a matter of waiting to see how tire wear goes as the race matures before we see another maneuver here. It looks like something could happen at any moment now between Roach and Greenan though. Back at the line and Robinson has Reed in his sights. The Gould looks a little bit wide coming into the S's. The Lola closes. Into the last corner of lap six. Mullins does look like he has a little bit of an edge under acceleration. Mark had a few quiet laps, but he's back to driving out of his skin just as he did in race one again. Robinson hounding him. Out of turn one and Mullins and Files look to be working their rear tires hard. Could that mean opportunities for Aaron Gochran in the closing laps? That looks like the start of something for Tony Greenan. Back at the start finish straight, Noel Robinson has a good look at the inside of Mark Reed, but he switches to the outside and slingshots on the straight. Behind Sylvie Mullins, Files is working the front tires too. Aaron Gochran was ready to pounce if that went sour. And there's Tony Greenan alongside Michael Roach entering the S's. But Michael holds the racing line. Into the last corner of lap 7. And Files is slowing. Aaron passes him on the inside up to second. And unfortunately the Lola is pulling off onto the grass. That's a real pity but Files and the Lola have really shown their potential against last year's champion. So now the race between Sylvie Mullins, our 2021 title holder, and our 2022 champion elect, Aaron Gochran. As for the battle for third place, Tony Greenan seems to be very interested in Michael Roach's new rear wing. Noel Robinson has pulled away from Mark Reed as they start lap 8. The question now for Aaron Gochran is how much tyre wear did Sylvie experience during that battle with Jonathan Files? Can he push Mullins now for an opportunity late in the race? I don't think Tony is strategizing at the moment. He's just looking for any gap around Michael. There's a definite misfire from the World Series as Tom Gochran starts lap 8. Oh, and Gary Graham is slowing as well. That's a pity. He's been going well today too while on track. Mullins and Gochran start lap 9. Michael Roach and Tony Greenan are still inseparable as they complete lap 8. Gary Graham leaves space for Sylvie Mullins and Aaron Gochran to go through. Michael Roach and Tony Greenan will catch him shortly. 5th place Noel Robinson starts lap 9. As does Mark Reed in sixth. At the start of the S's, Aaron Gochran takes a tight entry and closes quite a bit of ground on Sylvie Mullins. Tony Greenan tries a wide entry for a fast exit against Michael Roach. Tom Gochran seems to be going well again. I wonder if he got that temperature issue that he had in Kirkstown, which comes and goes. A 52 there from Sylvie and a 51 from Aaron. You can see that gap has closed. They were negotiating around Gary Graham on the last lap. Tony Greenan has a look at the pit side of Michael Roach and a little look at the other. He's got a nose past Michael midway through turn one, but he's got a drop back for Campion Corner. He looks like he's got the speed to go up the left hand side of Michael there as they head out the country. Well, Robinson laps Gary Graham who was able to hold with him for quite a long time in the earlier stages of the race. Tom Gochran's about to get an update on how Aaron's getting on in the race. And Tony Greenan did pass Michael Roach out the country. He enters the S's in third place. Sylvie and Aaron have passed Tom safely as they start lap 11. Tom can enjoy his front row seat of this battle for a while. Sylvie and Aaron both did 52s with their passing on that lap. Let's see if Tony can build a bit of an advantage over Michael. 
A little twitch from the rear there. Aaron Gochran always looks to be able to take about a car length on the way into the S's. And Tony's starting to power on. The leaders pass Gary Graham again as they start lap 12. That's a 51 from Tony. He's doing his best to give chase. Aaron takes a tight line around turn one. Tony's going to meet Gary and Tom quite close together. No matter how accommodating they are, that'll probably lose him a bit of time. Noel Robinson's lapping very consistently in the 52s in this race. Different approach to the S's by Aaron this time. You can see him closing a little bit mid-corner. Bit twitchy on the exit. Tony looking to pass Tom through here. The World Series will keep to the right on the way out of here, I'd say. Lap 12 was another fast one for these two. Back in the 51s again. They seem to be able to match each other. Is the back getting a bit lively for Sylvie now, though? Tony Green in safety past Tom Gochran, but that was a mid-52 for him. Tony's leaning on the rear out of here as well. Well, Robinson starts lap 13. Poor Gary Graham. I think his car gets stuck in gear when the compressor for the paddle change breaks down. The shrill sound of the Lee Stone running sweetly in sixth place. Aaron works a wide entry into the S's this time. By the final corner, he's closed right up on Sylvie. But this is where the ghoul takes back what it loses on the corners. Aaron's done well on the braking for turn one. He's very close to Sylvie now. But the straight out the country is another place where the power kicks in. That's Tony's fastest lap so far in the race, 51.038. Michael Roach hasn't managed any 51s in this race yet, as he did in the first one. Aaron's having a look on the inside of Sylvie Mullins as they come out of turn three. The gas-wise car flaming into the S's. Is this the push to end the season with an extra flourish? I think Mark Reed would be satisfied with another sixth place in the Lee Stone today. Even with Gary Graham keeping well off the line, they're both back in the 52s on this lap. Third place, Tony Greenan will have to negotiate Gary Graham on the exit of the final corner of this lap. He must be doing a flyer because he's still done a 51. Very tidy from Sylvie Mullins on the beginning of lap 15. Tony Greenan is really in the groove too. Noel Robinson gets a surprise when he tries to go past Tom Gochran. Even keeping out of the way, the World Series has it on the straight. Aaron tries that inside cut from Sylvie. Working different lines must help keep the leader unsettled. Tony Greenan can treat it like a qualifying session at the moment. Mark Reed starts lap 15 as Sylvie and Aaron come down to complete it. The F3 going quite wide on the curbs there. They're both back in the mid 51s though. Lap 16 around turn one. Sylvie seems to be maintaining a good gap ahead of Aaron Gochran. We must be entering the final few minutes of the race. That'll be a relief to Gary Graham. Michael Roach in fourth place. I'd say Noel Robinson is making a bit of ground on the race one winner. It would be interesting to see a couple of Lee Stones if they came out to do battle next year. It would also be nice to see a couple of these World Series cars going head to head. So it looks like one win a year in the last couple of seasons for Michael Roach. But that still proves a point. Noel's had one too this year. 
Sylvie's on one as well, but he looks likely to make it too. They begin lap 17, which will be the penultimate lap. The Lee Stone sways really nicely between turn 1 and 2. Mullins and Gochran pass Gary Graham again. Tony's taken just about another second out of the leaders on lap 16, but it's too late now. It looks like Aaron might be the one losing a bit of adhesion as he tries to turn in tight there on the S's. Tony's on course for runner-up spot in this year's championship. Sylvie's making sure of it. That's a 51 to a 52 by Aaron as they start the final lap. Third place, Tony Green will have just caught sight of them as he started the straight. Sylvie's made an almost comfortable lead for himself as Mark Reed clings on heroically to the lead lap. It's been a great season for Tony Greenan, but he's been unlucky not to clock up a win. Michael Roach starts the final lap. Gary Graham still keeping it going as Noel Robinson completes lap 17. Reed will have to let them go. If it had been a 17 lap as they often are on the national circuit, he would have finished on the lead lap. Not a bad achievement in the 1000cc car. Really looking forward to seeing how Tony goes starting next year in this car. And hopefully Gary Graham will be able to put his troubles behind him over the winter. Rounding the last corner of the 2022 Formula Boss Ireland Championship, Sylvie Mullins bookends the year with another win and Aaron takes a victory swerve to celebrate the championship. Mark Reed finishes the race in sixth that's third place Tony Greenan. So Sylvie Mullins and the Gould still race winners at the end of 2022. Aaron Gochran, Formula Boss Ireland champion. Mark Reed, a very competitive visitor. Tony Greenan, second in the overall championship and also in the Boss 2 category. Fourth place for Michael Roach and third in the Boss 2 category. Noel Robinson will take third in the championship with fifth in this race. Seventh in the race and second of the Boss 1 cars gave Tom Gochran a large winning margin in the category. Gary Graham's determined finish would also pay off in the points. Sylvie was delighted to finish what may be his last race in the car with a win. Super, yeah, it's great to be back in here. No, probably takes a bit to get back into it again too. You know, last year I was driving it all year. Uh, and you know, when you're out of them for a while, and I'm not getting any younger. So <laughs> it, takes a bit of, it takes a bit of while to get used to it again to get back to its old tricks. For sale now, one careful lady owner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> super proud of the morning back in the evening. Yeah. I've owned it since 07 and I've had some wonderful years. Yeah, I might still be here on the next one. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> we can't say never. Yeah, you might forget to put your phone number on the end. <laughs> Jonathan Files had really shown the potential of his Lola, climbing to the lead of the race before a mechanical failure. Just the spigot shaft broke. We got a, a, a shaft made um, over here to try and get the car out for this weekend, just to try and keep the class going. And, uh, wasn't up to scratch. It snapped as soon as I touched the curb out the back there. So I kind of knew it was, it was uh, one of those ones that was, might let me down. It had been a burnt out electrical connection on a pump that sidelined him during that delayed start of the first race. Nobody realises how much effort goes into that car. It's 26 years old. Yeah, you know, it's not designed to do what it's doing. When it, when it goes, it is well. Like, for us, it's well worth it. We love seeing it. Oh, well, I did think about trying to, you know, see about tra trading it in for a, an F3, but an F3 car is too boring. I wouldn't be happy. It, it does what you want it to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, stick to it. It's, it's getting there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. These lads won't give it's up. It's easy for me to say that now. Oh, I know, yeah. But you pay for it, will you? <laughs> The friendly rivalry growing between Aaron Gochran and Tony Greenan has been a nice thing to observe in recent times. 
We've played Oren Cocker for winning the, this thing out right today. He 100% deserves it. And there's no objections by me. He deserves it. Best driver here all year. So, yeah, so 100%. And uh, the third sheet next year then? Clean sheet, yeah. Still haven't got a win on the board. Uh, we've got the fastest lap here today, but uh, hopefully next year. You've been really close. You've just been unlucky. Yeah, yeah. I was caught sleeping that, that race there and Mick was defending against me there, so it sort of held things up. But once I got past him, uh, the pace was there. The pace was there if I can get off the lane. You know? But all good and brilliant racing all year. Formula Boss Ireland Champion 2022, Aaron Gochran reflects on a great year. It was very good, yeah. It was a savage year. I loved it, so I did. Um, but no, it was deadly to have the last race with Sylvia. I enjoyed that. With Sylvia winning it last year, I thought it's working out quite well. So it was a great little battle with Sylvia. I enjoyed that last race. It was got lucky on the start. Got a bit of a squeeze and got down the inside of Tony. And then it was fairly clear behind me for the rest of the race. I could kind of concentrate on Johnny and <laughs> on Johnny and uh, Sylvie. So. It was a good race, I'm happy as Larry. I was enjoyed that race, there was no pressure going into it. I could really go in and just relax and see what happened. So but um no, it's been a brilliant championship, I have to say. It's I can't can't thank everybody enough for the hard work to be fair. The boys in Stone are unbelievable, everybody. Um, even the boys J and PTG who wrapped the two cars, you know, they look like mint. It's happy days. It's happy days. So can't complain. Um, roll on next season now. Indeed. Today's performance moved Michael Roach up to fourth ahead of Daniel Faherty and Tom Gochran ahead of Files. Guy Graham's determined effort to finish moved him ahead of Keen Carey and Mullins moved into the top ten even after starting just four rounds. In boss one, Sylvie Mullins was the big mover on the day, up to third. The Gochrans really do have a lot to celebrate. And in Boss 2, it was Michael Roach reaching the podium after his excellent performance. Noel Robinson moved up to 4th and Gary Graham up to 6th.